At Art and Object, we're delighted to be bringing you this, our latest offering, the collection of the American collector and philanthropist, Mr. Glenn Schaefer. Over some 20 years, based in New Zealand in Nelson, Mr. Schaefer has put together a most wonderful and unique collection of not just New Zealand art, but wonderful international examples as well. If you're able to attend the viewing, it's such a unique opportunity to be able to see the art made by such international greats as Fred Sandback, Jenny Holzer and others. As well as Mr. Schaefer's obvious love of painting and sculpture, there's a wonderful collection of ethnographic objects which you wouldn't often see in this country. Mr. Schaefer doesn't very often give interviews and as Ben says in his intro to the catalogue, when he speaks, it would be a good idea to listen. So we hope that you might be able to join us here this Saturday at 3 o'clock to hear Mr. Schaefer in conversation with me. I do hope you can make it in to view the auction. We're on view every day now until the auction takes place on Tuesday evening at 6.30. Following this, we have three more auctions until the end of the year, which is coming upon us so quickly. Important paintings and contemporary art in November, books and new collector's art in December. So we hope that you'll be here to enjoy those auctions with us as we round off another busy year. One of the hallmarks of the Glenn Schaefer collection is abstraction, particularly West Coast American abstraction. And in that space, there are some wonderful connections between concurrent themes that were taking place in abstraction in New Zealand in the 1950s. We think, of course, of Gordon Walters and Milan Mercosic, both of whom are represented in this collection. This work here from 1955 by Carl Benjamin called City at Night is a work that when it was unpacked really sparked a lot of conversation here at Art and Object because almost instantaneously we were able to make the connections between the artists that I've just mentioned but another painter who is a connecting figure who is not represented in this collection but is an artist who gets spoken of very much in context with Gordon Walters is an artist called John McLaughlin and Carl Benjamin and John McLaughlin exhibited in a really crucial exhibition in 1959 in America. So in Glenn Schaefer's collection, we get to make some wonderful connections in terms of the global language of abstraction. And this work from 1955 by Carl Benjamin is one of the earlier abstract works in the collection and really feels to me like almost like a cornerstone of the American West Coast story of abstraction as it's represented in this wonderful collection. Behind me, I think has to be one of the most serious and committed singular bodies of abstract work produced in New Zealand. Milan Mercosic's achromatic red, green and blue from 1983. RGB perhaps riffing on the contemporary code for colour coding in LED screens and computers. But really, if abstraction is one of the defining areas in which the Schaefer collection really sets itself forward as one of the most serious private collections of art in this country, it's not in a loose, gestural, form, colour, paint handling kind of way. It's more in a material assertion of fact. Glenn Schaefer's eye, I think, has been honed on a, on a level of abstraction in America. People like uh, Robert Ryman, Agnes Martin. So when he comes and he looks at New Zealand abstraction, he does it with a slightly different eye to maybe what we're accustomed to here. And these three fantastic Mercosic's paintings, united by Glenn Schaefer himself, I think, originally, divided up for sale for obvious reasons. There's three large works, but then reunited for him a few years down the track when he managed to acquire the third work, are really beyond the level of abstraction we see in this country and really have to be close to the absolute apex of, of Mercosic's practice. They consist of three largely uniform surfaces of, of colour. I say uniform, but when you, you get up close, you notice that there is what the wonderful critic Peter Leach termed when he was talking about Mercosic's work, depth and flatness. The way that you are effectively dealing with a flat two-dimensional surface, but when you look closely it's a surface you can project into. And that surface is ruled over with these fine crayon lines that uh, divide the canvas across. Taken together they are just absolutely spellbinding. The Glenn Schaefer collection, as we look around the gallery, is filled with punchy blasts of colour. The Winston Rove is really a complete marvel. But also, as a counterpoint to that, within the collection we have a series of monochromatic works. The Gordon Walters, that wonderful Judy Miller, the Kellerminis, and of course, this paired back 
really reductive Rosalie Gascoigne. Rosalie Gascoigne is a really interesting figure in the context of this collection because she almost forms a bridge between the New Zealand practice and the international practice. It's hard to say whether Rosalie Gascoigne is an Australian or a New Zealand artist. She was born in New Zealand, so many of her influences, most particularly Colin McCann, come from New Zealand, but her visual language, of course, developed in Australia. This work here from 1994 is a real favourite of mine. What we have here, as Rosalie Gascoigne said herself, is simply the experience of air. In her beloved Australian Capital Territory, which is a space that she comes back to again and again and again, the idea of the artist going on a road trip and finding materials such as these weathered boards and bringing them together in this wonderfully reduced atmospheric abstract work. We're very privileged on a regular occasion to handle the very best of New Zealand and often Australian art, but uh, I never thought in our role here that we would be offering the best of international 21st, 20th century art. Here we have the wonderful works by people like Pippa Lottie, Rose, Larry Pittman, Jenny Holzer. But what's particularly special for me is this wonderful little miniature survey of minimalist works. We have the wonderful Donald Judd chairs, these fantastic Tony Smith cast bronze sculptures, and also this wonderful work by Fred Sandback. Now these are the types of works that you, know, you only ever really see in this country in reproduction. So implore you to come down and have a look because they are simply stunning. We get some wonderful lovely light coming through here in the morning and it just absolutely beautifully animates this wonderful four-part work by Fred Sandback from 1981. Now it comprises really only of modern acrylic yarn in blue, orange and yellow. The work gains its genius I guess like a lot of minimalism does insofar as its sort of symbiotic relationship with the architecture, the way it animates a given space and this twine and the shadows play on it. It's almost like it's sort of cutting through the air and dividing up the space quite beautifully. It's a work of deceptively simple means, but it's a wonderfully generous, generative, conceptual work of art. Another work which you know, I've enjoyed being around very much is these two simple cast bronze squares by Tony Smith. They're called the Elevens Are Up, of equal proportions, with the two metal bars said to represent the veins on the back of one's neck. It really is the type of work that I thought that we'd never be lucky enough to offer. This wall here, in which we have 45 years of international and New Zealand abstract practice, has really caught a lot of people's attention, and you can see why. On my right we have an artist about whom, until I saw this collection, I really didn't know very much at all. Ollie Shivenen. This is a work, Red Landing, from the early 1960s. Behind me we go into 2006, this magnificent seven panel Stephen Bamry, the Donald Judd Copper Chairs from the 1980s, and there at the end we have Don Driver's early 1970s work. And Ben's hang here, the relationship of the works, the spaces and the shapes, really make this a very, very satisfying wall. And we see the potency and the endless conversation and changes within abstraction over that 45 year period. And right through this wall, we get to see, if you like, best of breed abstract practice in America. Of course, minimalist sculpture, Donald Judd, and at the end there, a Don Driver, which I think is one of the finest, if I can say, one of the loveliest Don Drivers we've ever offered.